Well then, how can we make things more electrophilic or more nucleophilic? Let's say that we treat something with an acid. If you treat something with an acid, is that thing going to gain or lose a proton? If you react something with an acid, would it gain or lose a proton? It's gonna gain a proton. Would that make it more positive or more negative? More positive. So if you treat something with an acid, does that make it into a better electrophile or a better nucleophile? A uh, better electrophile. Right. That's a very important idea. If you treat something with acid, it becomes a better electrophile or maybe a better leaving group because it gets more positive. Okay. How about if you treat something with a base? If you treat something with a base, is it going to gain or lose a proton? It's going to something with the base, it is going to, um, it's going to lose a proton. That's right. Would that make it more positive or more negative? Uh, it would make it uh, more negative. Better electrophile or better nucleophile? Better nucleophile. I've been saying how important acid-base chemistry was in organic chemistry, and now we can see why. Mm -hmm. You can use acids to make things into better electrophiles and better leaving groups. Mm -hmm. and you can use bases to make things into better nucleophiles, and this is something you're going to be doing on lots and lots of reactions for the rest of the course. If your original electrophiles and nucleophiles and leaving groups are not good enough, then we add either acid or base to make them better, and then we can get the reaction to go. So this is a very important little table here to have in your notes. Right. Acids make things more positive, more electrophilic, or better leaving groups, and bases make things more negative, more nucleophilic. Let's look at our original starting materials here. We started with this oxygen. Now this is a neutral oxygen. Correct. Is a neutral oxygen an acceptable leaving group? No. No. Neutral oxygen is not an acceptable leaving group. So what did we do to make it acceptable? We used an acid. That gave it the positive charge. Is a positive oxygen an acceptable leaving group? Yes. Absolutely. So this is a good example of how we can use an acid to get a reaction to happen if it wouldn't happen otherwise. And also, uh, by the same token here, we started here with neutral bromine. Now, is neutral bromine an acceptable nucleophile? Can we ever use neutral halogens as nucleophiles? Um, no. No. But after it loses its proton, it becomes a negative bromine. Is that a nucleophile? Yeah. So you can see how important this acid-base reaction was here first. Not only did it give us the acceptable leaving group and a good electrophile, it also produced the nucleophile that we needed as well. So very often we need to do an acid or a base reaction to get the main reaction to happen. Let's take a look at the SN2 handout again for a second. Let's look at the bottom of page two. Bottom of page two of the SN2 handout. That's right. So we were just reviewing these ideas here. At the bottom of page two, we can see that a neutral halogens are not nucleophiles. But a negative halogen like bromine could be a nucleophile. And by the same token, a neutral oxygen is not a leaving group, but a positive oxygen is. So we used. Those are important tables to have memorized so you know when reactions can happen and when they can't. So we can see there's no, we couldn't do an SN2 here. Mm -hmm. There's no SN2 we can do here, but now this has a good nucleophile and a good leaving group. And then we could do the SN2 because of the acid-base reaction. So acid-base reactions will be crucial for the rest of the course to get reactions that happen that otherwise wouldn't. So when you, do, uh, when you are working with uh, a strong acid, um, you can kind of suspect that you're going to be doing an SN2 after the propanation. That's right. Well, though, as the course goes on, you'll learn more and more different types of reactions. That's right. That's one thing that you can suspect. But in general, you can suspect that whoever's getting protonated will be acting like an electrophile or a leaving group. That's the main lesson that we were trying to, that, trying to put in. Whoever's being protonated would act like the electrophile or the leaving group. And the conjugate base from the acid might act like the nucleophile here. So it's very important here that we don't lose track of this bromide, because we use the bromide for the next step over here. Another very important thing we learned is anytime you see one of those four strong acids, you know what's going to happen first. The strong acid is going to protonate somebody first. Okay. This is the first reaction then we've seen of something that you can do with ethers. This is a way you can use an ether to make an alcohol. Make sense? Awesome. And again, this is a very important idea to have in your notes too. How acids make things positive, better electrophiles and leaving groups. Bases make things negative, better nucleophiles. We'll be using that for a lot of the remaining reactions. Actually, we're not done with that reaction we were looking at before. 
Right. Remember that in the original reaction, we took the ether and we reacted it with hydrobromic, mm -hmm. hydrobromic acid, and that gave us this alcohol and this halo alkane. But let's ask if there's any further reactions that we can go through. Suppose that we have excess hydrobromic acid. If we have excess hydrobromic acid, how would you expect the hydrobromic acid to react now, uh, with these products? Did I limit the arrow on the second? Mm -hmm. um, is that correct? This one here? Uh, no, the one about that. The arrow coming from the. Um, is it, the, is it the, the head of the arrow going in the correct place on the second one? Or should it be? I believe so. What, which arrow are you worried about? Um, this one. Oh, no, absolutely. I kind of made the, the same mistake that uh, you were talking about last time. So it's very tempting, that's right, to put the head on the oxygen. That was a mistake. You're right. We were just talking about how it makes the carbon electrophilic, not the oxygen. So that's a good catch. So in fact, the oxygen is the leaving group. That's right, so I made a mistake there. So that would give us these two products here. Correct. And then we want to ask, let's say there's excess hydrobromic acid. Could the hydrobromic acid react with either of these two products that we've got? Let's see here. Um. group could snag a, a proton. Good. Good. So let's show the mechanism for that. That's good. Make sure that you clearly show the lone pair that's at the tail of that arrow. And now we can draw the intermediate from that step. Further reactions that could now be logical. Yes. Um, the uh, uh, proton could be kicked off the, the OH. Now uh, this could come back and snag one of the protons back. And, I mean, it would be the same thing that we had before. You mean just reversing that yeah. reaction? But as far as what we have. Now we could just reverse this reaction, but generally speaking, we don't generally want to just reverse the reaction we just did. Are there any reactions that would be logical to have happen here that would not just reverse that previous step? What would be a logical reaction between this bromide and this substrate here? Now, on the, um, did we lose the um, halo alkane when we brought the it? The halo alkane would still be in solution. Oh, okay. However, I don't think there's any interesting reactions that we can do with that. So we don't have to write it in the next one. We don't need to keep writing that. We okay. should keep in mind that that was already produced. Okay. But we want to ask, is there any new reaction that could occur between the bromide and this substrate? Where would be logical places to put the head and tails of our arrows now? Well, you could have the bromide attack uh, one of the uh, carbons. Good, that's right. What type of mechanism do you think we'll have happen here? It's going to be an SN2. Okay, good. Let's see if we can confirm that in our table. What row and what column are we in? We're in, um, we're in the primary. Right. And we're uh, attacking with the weak base. So That's right. So weak base SN2. primary would be SN2. Now, I don't know that, I think your arrows might not really show what an SN2 reaction is. How many steps are there in an SN2? Um, there are, there's one step. So. That's right, but I think you were trying to split that up into two steps. That's right. So what we end up with is...
Good. Except, remember, the most important part of any picture is the charges. Mm -hmm. So we've got to, oh, well, yeah. this was a mistaken picture, right? We should cross that one out. Yeah. yeah. And here so you got that picture, right? OK, so and so you got the arrow. Well, we'll end up with the bromine on this alpha carbon. Correct. And we produce water. And now we produced a second equivalent of haloalkane. We'd already produced one equivalent of haloalkane here. And now we've produced a second equivalent of the same haloalkane. Okay. So if we started with one equivalent of the ether, if we're starting with one equivalent of the ether, we've ended up with two equivalents of the haloalkane. 